the infant brain forms synapses at a very rapid rate. These usually achieve a maximum density between 6 and 12 months of age, then decrease due to disuse or natural attrition. In other words, the infant brain retains only those synapses that it frequently uses, so early sensory experience is critical to their formation and retention. Imaging studies have shown that early stimulation enhances brain function. Until recently, it was believed that brain development was essentially complete by age three. However, recent studies tell a different story. Using magnetic resonance imaging, researchers have shown that brain structure continues to change through age 15, even though brain size in preschool children is almost that of the adult. Abnormal development, brain injury, and hypoxia can all affect brain function, although the deficits may not become obvious until later in the child's development. However, there are signs and symptoms of neurologic difficulties that can be assessed, as well as conditions known to elicit them. One of these is neonatal hypoglycemia. For newborns, approximately 90% of total glucose consumption is by the brain. Prolonged hypoglycemia can damage delicate brain structures. Most practitioners agree that a minimum plasma glucose concentration of 40 milligrams per deciliter should be maintained and that a level less than this should be treated whether or not the infant is symptomatic. Known risk factors for neonatal hypoglycemia include prematurity, defined as a gestation of less than 37 weeks, birth weight less than 2,500 grams or greater than 4,000 grams, being either small or large for gestational age or having interuterine growth restriction. Situations which can cause hypoglycemia include delayed feeding, insufficient breastfeeding or fluid restrictions, perinatal hypoxia, asphyxia or hypothermia, respiratory distress, sepsis or any other condition causing the infant to be clinically unstable. Maternal factors that can predispose the newborn to hypoglycemia include diabetes, RH incompatibility, intrapartum IV administration of high concentration glucose, administration of terbutaline or beta blockers, and alcohol or drug abuse. All newborns meeting any of the criteria listed should have a baseline glucose drawn whether or not they are symptomatic. Facilities that provide newborn care have specific protocols for monitoring glucose levels and managing hypoglycemia, with specific actions delineated for the various levels of hypoglycemia. It is important to know and follow your facility's policy and procedure. It is not uncommon for infants with hypoglycemia to be asymptomatic, but there are specific symptoms associated with the disorder. They include jitteriness, tremors, lethargy, abnormal or high-pitched cry, refusal to eat, poor suck, hypotonia, apnea, tachypnea, tachycardia, temperature instability, and seizures. Any infant displaying one or more of these symptoms should have the blood glucose level determined immediately. These symptoms can also be related to a variety of other neurological deficits or problems, and further medical testing may be necessary to determine the origin. They may also signal a cohort of problems. For example, the term infant who is hypoglycemic, secondary to maternal drug abuse, will often go through drug withdrawal and require supportive care. Mild, transient hypoglycemia that is well controlled with regular feeding can be managed in the maternity unit. For the infant who needs more invasive measures or who has concurrent medical issues, transfer to NICU may be required. Any sign of decreased movement or inability to move is another negative neurological sign that needs to be reported immediately. Newborns have immature neurologic systems, and this affects their ability to regulate body temperature. For this reason, persistent hypothermia may develop as a result of serious infections, such as sepsis. 